Um. Yeah, that says the minimum system requirement includes 16 gigabytes of RAM. I do a lot of system requirement videos, including on like the biggest AAA launches around, and um, that's a first. Have any of you guys ever seen 16 gigabytes of RAM as the minimum system requirement? I've never seen it before. And they are recommending 32 gigabytes of RAM. So hey, there you go. Now, anyway, what is this game? Because honestly, I hadn't even heard of it until I found out it's coming out in like a day or two. So Icarus. So Icarus, well, you know, according to the Steam page, it's a session-based PvE survival game for up to eight co-op players or solo. Okay, what I have looked up about this is, uh, is, is this made by the creator of DayZ? Is that who's making this? So this does actually look kind of interesting. And looking up the, uh, you know, the screenshots and some video of it, like, elements of it do look really good, but you can also tell that this is a lower budget production. So a lot of things, especially in motion in the video that I've seen, like I've watched this thing, like it just looks a little bit low budget and kind of janky. So seeing those kinds of system requirements on a game that, while it does have some really nice looking effects, like I'm not saying it's, it's just ugly overall, it certainly isn't completely mind blowing in a lot of scenes. I don't know, am I still wearing my glasses? <laughs> I don't usually wear glasses in my videos. You, I'm usually a contacts kind of guy. Anyway, but where were these system requirements? Let's keep digging in. Um, so. I'm gonna help you with a little more than just, hey, here's the system requirements. I'll help you understand how your GPU and CPU compares to these, and I'm also gonna give you at least some educated guesses on what kind of performance and resolution this is targeting. So I'm gonna say right now that if we look over here at the recommended versus the minimum GPU, the minimum GPU is a, is a GTX 1066 gigabyte which uh, I have one of those. I may or may not get this game to test. You could keep your eye out on that. It might happen. But the recommended is an RTX 3060 Ti. And so I went trying to find out if anybody had like um, benchmarks, because I know this game had some beta tests. Now beta tests aren't reflective of the final game. And I wasn't able to find a 1060 or a 3060 Ti. I was able to find a 3060. And in this um, video, which I'll, I'll link in, in my description if you're interested, I was seeing the 3060. Now it didn't say the resolution, but somebody asked it in the comments and we saw that this was at 1080p. And by the way, I double checked to make sure this wasn't limited by the RAM. This is somebody on 32 gigabytes of RAM. So 32, 32 gigabytes of RAM, a Ryzen 5600X CPU. So this does seem like it's gonna be GPU limited here on this RTX 3060 at 1080p. 1080p high appears to only be hitting in this particular scene around 60 FPS. Now, um, at low settings, you're able to get up into the 80s, but notice that this scene isn't really doing anything. Like, it's kind of a, a, a nice looking sky, I suppose. But like, ugh. And then um, on ultra settings, they were below 60 FPS. They were down here in the 50s. Now this was from the second beta. I also found the same person did uh, from the first beta made a, a longer video where we saw at ultra settings around this waterfall, they were down in the mid 40s jumping over here to high settings. Um, they were also kind of in the 40s. <laughs> and then down into medium, they were getting into the mid 50s or so. And it wasn't until they went down to low that they got up over the 60 FPS mark here, right? And that is on a 3060. Now a 3060 Ti is a bit more powerful than a 3060. But what I'm getting at here, guys, is this is 1080p. And it, okay, I, I'm just really hoping this final game has significantly better performance than those betas did. Because 
That was a little bit scary, but what I'm getting at here is when you see a 3060 Ti, you might not be expecting that to be the recommendation for a game at what I'm assuming is 1080p 60fps at either high or ultra settings, based on what I saw the normal 3060 doing in those beta benchmarks. Now again, hopefully the final version of the game performs better than that beta did, because that's a little bit scary. Now the GTX 1066 gigabyte, so what do I think that's gonna get you? Well, let's jump over here, and this can also help you figure out where your GPU would probably fall in terms of performance relative to these minimum and recommended GPUs. So if you go to Tech Power Up, they have a GPU database where they uh, look at all their reviews of different GPUs and games and then kind of give you a performance comparison. So a GTX 1066 gigabyte is, you know, fairly close to a GTX 970. It's better and it has, and the six gigabyte version, you know, has more VRAM than like a 970. I'm just trying to give you some relative, like, you know, comparison points. Um, you know, an RX 570 is generally like 89% of the performance of a 1060. A 1650 is only 78% of the performance. We could go up here, you know, if you have like a 1660, that's a bit better than a 1060. If you have a 1070, that's usually 35% better, right? Uh, if you have a 2060, that's a 59% improvement. That's similar to a 1080. Anyway, so I'm just kind of giving you an idea of where these all fall. A 3060 Ti, the recommended GPU, is more than double on average. Again, this isn't perfect. This doesn't tell you exactly how it is in every game. These are just kind of some ballpark figures, some kind of averages. But the 3060 Ti, on average, is 2.36 times the performance of a 1060. Which tells me that if, if I'm right, that this is only hitting 1080p 60 FPS at like the ultra settings, I don't think this is just that the minimum is gonna get you, you know, 60 FPS at low. I think this is gonna be like low settings, 30 FPS. Like this is your bare minimum to get into the game. Now, what could help us out here? I did look it up and I did find an article here the, which claims that the game will be supporting both AMD FSR and NVIDIA DLSS. And you probably just heard my heater kick on because I forgot to turn that off to film my video and there's a big heater vent right next to my microphone. But you know what, we're rolling with it. I don't got time to film videos more than once. You get my stream of consciousness, one take, oftentimes no editing. That's how the channel rolls here because I got a real job, guys. This is just for fun. Anyway, <laughs> um, so FSR could run on a GTX 1060, and notice they're not giving us any AMD GPUs, but that's why I'm saying you should head over to this relative performance chart or look at it as I scrolled through so you could get an idea of where your GPU falls. For example, a 6600 XT is usually pretty close, but a little bit behind a 3060 Ti. So you can kind of, again, see where yours falls. So what this is telling me is that a 3080 is probably only gonna be pushing like 1440p 60 FPS if you just look at the jump from a 3060 Ti to a 3080 in terms of its performance and then jumping from 1080p resolution to 1440p. I think 4K in this game is gonna be absolutely insane and probably impossible without heavily using DLSS. Now I did double check and this, this performance video wasn't using DLSS. DLSS was turned off. So Hopefully DLSS and FSR are gonna make some significant improvements here. Now, again, the RAM requirement, I'm really curious if it really needs this much, but um, on these benchmark videos, this was reporting around 16 gigabytes. Even, uh, even when they switched down to, what was it, low settings, it was still reporting almost 16 gigabytes of usage. So maybe it really needs that much. I'm curious how the game will run on eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, because this is gonna hit a lot of lower end gamers pretty hard here. Um, anyway, looks like low end systems are gonna really struggle in this game. Uh, processor wise, they're going with an Intel i5-8400 for the minimum and an Intel i7-9700. An i5-8400 is a six core, six thread processor. Well, the 9700, I believe is eight core, eight thread. And I don't think we got the hyper threading in this series until we hit the um, higher end thing. But you know what? I'll just look them up for you. 
i5-8400 came out in uh, October of 2017, and I was correct. It's six core, six thread processor from 2017, and the 9700 came out uh, in 2019, and it was eight core, eight thread. So I was correct on that. So these are not, you know, the newest CPUs, but they're also not super low end or super old CPUs that they're recommending here. And along with that huge RAM requirement, uh, I don't know guys. Now, if you wanna figure out where your CPU falls relative to these, that can be a little bit tricky to find a good list for. I do have one here I'll, I'll link in my comment section, which is at Tom's Hardware. They kind of keep track of all of their, uh, their benchmarks of various CPUs and kind of put them on a tier list, setting the current highest end gaming performance with the 12900K at, uh, um, excuse me, at 100% performance level. And then everything else is relative to that. So for example, the 9700, um, looks like they just have the K version on here, but the 9700K would be pretty similar to the 9700, just overclockable. Um, so this is falling at like 73% of that. Now, if you drop down to the um, 8400, which was our other one here, that's dropping down even further. And again, so you can kind of find where yours falls relative to these GPUs, you know, on this list. Although if it's really old, it's not even going to be on this list. You, you know, find some other find some other comparison tool for yourself. All right, guys. Now, are you interested in this game? I'm deciding if I want to buy this thing or not myself. What are you guys thinking? Let me know in the comments section, and I hope you have an excellent day.